Okay, folks, uh, today we're going to be talking about how to run the molecular weight frequencies in the database. This is a little bit more advanced features, uh, despite the fact that I'm focusing primarily on uh, new user videos on this channel. Uh, this one's a little bit more detailed, a little bit more um, um, advanced than a, than a beginner's, but I think you will find that once we go over this, you'll be able to pick it up pretty pretty easily even as a beginner so we're going to cover how to run the molecular weight frequencies in the database and uh, this is just kind of an outline of what we will cover in this video just to give you an overview first and then I will demonstrate it for you so the first thing to be aware of is that uh, you want to use precautions when experimenting with the molecular weight frequencies um, this is a, an important notice that has been posted in several different areas. Um, you can it's highlighted in blue here, so you can read this at your um, discretion and at your convenience. But basically, just know that these are all experimental. This is a very new addition to the Spooky Two software. And so um, we're basically experimenting with this and seeing how it uh, how it works for everybody. And uh, know that uh, you know since it's part of the Spooky Two installation, it's covered by the legal notice and disclaimer found at the end of the user's guide. So you know use use your judgment on how to use these frequencies. Um, you know. Um, and and just we'll see what happens so I will cover um, what is the molecular weight how to load and unload the database in the software how to quickly choose the molecular weight database only by clicking the plus and minus button in the programs tab how to use the preset and how to search for the related frequencies and the difference between the two shell presets for running molecular weight frequencies you'll you'll notice that one is a, a JW and one is a MM standing for manual mellow and prior to us having a molecular weight database um, there was a spreadsheet created by manual mallow to calculate frequencies um, so some folks still have these old um, custom uh, database entries that require this kind of uh, uh, calculation it's a different calculation and um, two frequencies and I'll show you it, it's a little complicated to describe it but once you see it it's not going to be that complicated and then we've got the option of running some uh, at drugs adverse effect uh, or adverse drug side effects uh, program to assist in removing possible side effects of uh, any kind of drug frequency that you choose to do um, but you'll also notice here in in this database there's an awful lot of uh, substances that relate to uh, herbal compounds vitamins minerals so it's not just pharmaceutical drugs in this database um, you know I, I tend to prefer to not use pharmaceutical drugs and my personal preference is not to use the frequencies of them either but that's not the purpose of this video and I'm not here to argue about it but uh, just know that it's not just pharmaceutical drugs that are in this database there's compounds and substances that's basically what it is so just like anything else there's pros and cons to everything so uh, we'll go over some of this and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about all right so let me minimize this first thing I want to uh, show you here is the um, mention of the molecular weight database in the user's guide on page 100 uh, you will notice that um, if there is a substance in the molecular weight database that you are trying to um, 
destroy or to uh, basically remove from your body, then you will apply the disintegrative factor. Um, and so just be aware that on the uh, programs tab, you will have this apply disintegrative factor box to tick in the event you want to destroy the molecule or remove it from your body. You know, I'm just going to pick an example here. Um, there's thimerosal in the database. Um, let's say you want to, you feel like that's something that you want to remove, and uh, you know you can look at that. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see here. Um, the next mention in the um, user's guide. This is the December first user's guide. In the system tab, you'll see that. Uh, to load the molecular weight database at uh, it's roughly 8,000 entries. So if you, there's a, um, when you download and install it on the main downloads page for spooky2.com, you'll see that there's a, um, um, a large database and a small database. The large one has the extensive notes which is what I prefer, and I think most people will. Uh, but you can load the smaller one, and it takes a little less time to launch. But I would highly recommend that you use the large database because the import, the notes are going to be extremely important to read. All right, moving on. The next mention in the mole uh, user's guide for the molecular weight uh, is here on page 127. Um, it mentions the Apply Disintegrative Factor feature. Um, this molecular weight database contains the molecular weight of many different compounds, elements, and important molecules. So, <coughs> excuse me, these can be converted to frequencies using a mathematical formula, um, and it's going to be shown on the System tab, and I will show you where that is located you'll see that the molecular weight to Hertz factor uh, is a specific calculation and the disintegrative factor is a specific calculation. So I will show you that on the system tab in just a minute, but it's mentioned here on page 127 of the user's guide. Okay, let's see what else we got here. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that. And let's go back to, uh, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to show you how to load the molecular weight database in the software. Um, on the system tab, you will see you've already downloaded and installed it. So now you have to tick this um, box right here where it says load molecular weight database. If I untick this at this point in time, it will unload the molecular weight database and it won't be available to be used. So as you can see on the tooltip here, uh, if you hover over this box, it says add the molecular weight programs to the database. So it's pretty clear here. All right. Here is the calculation factors that we I had just mentioned here earlier. All right. So the molecular weight to Hertz factor is this, and the disintegrative factor is that. All right. Your databases and uses are shown here. All right, moving on. Let's see what else we need to cover here. So that's how to load or unload the database in the software. Now we'll go over how to quickly choose the molecular weight database only by clicking the plus or minus button in the programs tab. So let's go on to the programs tab. And as you can see, I can deselect all of these sub databases and then select just the molecular weight and it will load that. Now, as you see, I've got a search feature here. So I'm gonna delete this and hit enter and now it will load all of the molecular weight frequencies 
uh, for the molecular weight database, which in here is 7,809, so roughly 8,000. So that's how to do that, folks. Let's go back and see what else we will need to cover. How to use the preset and how to search for the related frequencies. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Uh, let's see here. Um, I've got an example here where you want to search for ibuprofen. And uh, so you do a search, select ibuprofen, and there you see the molecular weight is 206.130 plus here, okay? So that's how you would search for something such as ibuprofen. Let's go back and see what else we need to cover here. Um, okay, so let's say we wanted to run a program called ibuprofen. Then I would uh, come back and go to the presets tab, go to the shell presets collection. I'm going to run it in remote and I will select molecular weight remote dash JW. This is the shell preset for remote for all of the molecular weight database entries. Okay. There's a second one down here and I'll get into that in just a minute, but for now we'll focus on this. I'll search for ibuprofen again. Scroll down to ibuprofen, double click it, and then the settings are already taken care of for you since this is a preloaded shell empty preset. I've already loaded my program. Go to my control panel, select allow generator overrides, click on the generator button, and select start. So now I've got this um, particular frequency for ibuprofen being uh, transmitted or broadcasted to my body. I'll go back and look at the programs tab to see what kind of repeat sequence. Alright, so this one is set for a repeat sequence of one. So after this nine minute program it will stop. Obviously if I wanted to run it three or four times I would change this number right here. Um, if I wanted to loop it continuously, I would select zero, and then you'd have to manually stop it. I don't think it's recommended, uh, based on the precautions, that you just loop indefinitely, especially if you're away from your computer. If you start having issues, you definitely want to stop it, okay? All right, so that's that. I'll set it back to one. Nothing's going to happen because I'm not going to go back to my control panel and allow generator overrates. But as you can see, we're already at 1 minute and 15 seconds. And once it gets to 9 minutes, it's going to stop. All right. All right. So I'm going to close this panel. Actually, I'll just leave it open. Um, go back to my little guide here. All right, so let's discuss the difference between the two two empty presets for molecular weight frequencies. Uh, you know, let's see here. I'll go back to, I'll close this, and I'll go to my presets tab. The substance remote manual mallow. In the notes, you will see that these are the recommended settings to apply molecular weights derived from frequencies as a result of calculating them from the manual mallow mass to frequency spreadsheet calculator and so you'll use this preset to deliver calculated frequencies versus the um, via the white remote so this spreadsheet is actually located in the form and you can go in here and as you can see um, you can put in your molecular weight. This is kind of the the older way to do it before we had the database in place. So some people have actually calculated ones from, you know, say six months ago before the 
molecular weight database was available to us. And so this was the way to calculate a frequency and uh, apply it using Manuel Mallow's spreadsheet as well as his settings and waveform. So that is that. You'll see that it calculates a, a remote mode frequencies, two of them, and a contact mode frequency, two of them. And it's based basically, basically on harmonics. You'll see that the 70th and the 77th harmonic are used. All right. So remote mode is on the left, contact mode on the right. So that's how that was done back in the day, six months ago. <laughs> All right, that's that. All right, I'll minimize that. And um, let's see what else. Okay, now I want to cover, oh yes, okay, let me go ahead and cover the adverse drug reaction. If you are running pharmaceutical drug frequencies and you want to I guess hedge your bets on uh, adverse drug reactions then you can be running this uh, separately on a different generator I've never used this I don't like to really run pharmaceutical frequencies but I do like you know vitamins and minerals and stuff like that um, some herbal compounds that are in there such as ginkgo biloba stuff like that you know but if you are running frequencies that are um, calculated from pharmaceutical drugs then if you want to minimize you know adverse drug reactions and you can be running this program on a whole different generator um, that's just a suggestion you know um, so I'll minimize that and let's go back to all right so now what I want to cover the last thing I want to cover is you know this is these are just tabs that I've opened if you really want to get geeky and dig further into molecular weights and what is it and how is it calculated and all that stuff you know here's one with the Khan Academy um, you can pause the video and look at this particular um, link you know just type in this link and search for it or just select molecular weight on your Google and you should be able to pull up these particular um, links so you can just right click and open up a new tab and that's what I've done here so that's this video here if you want to really dig into it further there's another one here that Lentech has on how to calculate molecular weight uh, you know this is the, for instance let's say you want to look into lipoic acid which is already in the database but let's say you didn't know that you can you know google it see what you come up with uh, Wikipedia always has some pretty informative articles about it. On the right side, you'll see these identifiers that you can right-click on and find information about it. PubChem seems to be a very popular thing. You can right-click on this link and go to that link. Let's see. And that, that would pull this up. And as you can see, it's got the molecular formula and it got some molecular weight. So, all right. But lipoic acid is already in the database, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just kind of showing you different ways to to look for, you know, compounds or supplements or whatever. You, you know, uh, I'm going to close that one. Uh, this one is, uh, let's see here. Uh, anyway, you get the idea lipoic acid this one has happens to be drug bank I'll go ahead and close that one all right so let's say uh, you know somebody in the past say what what about sativex I've heard about that so you just google it you know look at the manufacturer's website and 
then you see that based on your Google search, you know, there's other keywords that you can search for. So I go to this one here. And you say, oh, there's a Wikipedia article on that. So I'll go to Wikipedia. Uh, you know, on the right side, you can go over here and um, let's say, oh, okay, I want to go to the um, identifiers here of PubChem. Okay, so if I right click on that and I'll open it in a new tab then boom there it is okay PubChem is going to give you all the information about all the geeky stuff you want to know about it but there's a molecular weight so if you wanted to add this as a custom um, you know, I don't think this one is in the database so you can actually create a custom one but I'm just giving you an example here um, okay, so one thing that came up fairly recently on Facebook was this EBC46. You can uh, research it, but apparently this is an experimental compound um, that is, uh, you can read about it here. It's an experimental drug candidate being studied, blah, 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 okay, um, but it was brought up saying, hey, what if I wanted to experiment with that right now, you know, just uh, by doing it electronically, then then this is how you would do it. Um, since it's not in the database, you would research it, you pull it up on Wikipedia, and you go to this little area right here, and um, you can see that uh, PubChem's got a... Um, identifier so you would right click it and uh, you would open the link in the new tab and they kind of I don't know they messed this one up so I'm gonna go back to the one that was here before I think that link is broken so this is the actual link to it you know if you go to the PubChem site and search for EBC-46 you'll be able to um, you know, pull this page up and you'll see that the molecular weight is this. You can download the information here. You can download the record if you want. You can search for other compounds when you're here on this page. But let's say now that I know the molecular weight, I'm going to go ahead and create a custom program. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy that number. I'm going to highlight it, right click it, and copy it. Now I'm going to go to my um, software and I'm going to create a custom program. So I'm going to uh, create program and uh, I'm going to put EBC46 here. Dash 46, all right. And the frequency, I've already copied it. So now I'm just going to paste it, right click into that open field. Now I'm going to paste that frequency. And for this description, I'm just going to put in notes, you know, that I got this from PubChem. Uh, PubChem. Oops. All right, so let's see here. I'll go back to the PubChem location. And, uh, um, well, actually... Rather than copying PubChem stuff, I'm going to just go to this Wikipedia site. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just highlight all this stuff here. And right click and copy it. And now go back to my um, notes section here. And right click on this open field and paste it. And now I've got my comprehensive notes you know, based on Wikipedia. I'll go ahead and modify this. I'll just put wiki. So that I'll know what source I got it from. So all this text here is basically a copy and paste of Wikipedia information. And now that I've gotten all this done, I will go ahead and save the, uh, save this as a custom program. So I'm gonna hit save right here. Are you sure you want to save and exit? Yes. So now it's going to load it into the um, database. And it's going to be in the custom database since I created it as opposed to the molecular weight. 
but I still will use the molecular weight. Um, I will still use this one since it's based on molecular weight and not on a calculated substance with that uh, um, this is the calculated uh, frequency with the spreadsheet. I didn't use that, so I'm not going to use the substance. I'm going to be using this molecular weight, JW. And as soon as it finishes loading here, I will show you. Okay, we're up to 9,800. So it's going to load up to about 13,000. And uh, so it'll take a little bit of time here. In the interim, I will go back to, in the meantime, I'll go back to our little guideline here. We've covered everything here. We know what a molecular weight is. We know how to load and unload the database and the software. Uh, we can quickly choose the molecular weight database by clicking the plus or minus button in the Programs tab. Um, we know how to use the preset and how to search for related frequencies like ibuprofen. Uh, the difference between the two shell presets running molecular weight frequencies. One is the data molecular weight database which is the first on the one on top which would be the molecular weight dash JW and then the second one is for those that are a little bit older that before before we had the database we calculated it and if you have a calculated frequency on the 70th and 77th harmonic then you would use the manual mallow spreadsheet uh, you know if you use that spreadsheet to calculate your harmonic frequencies and then, then obviously you would use the the one in the bottom in the shell presets that uh, have to do with Manuel Mallow's calculated frequencies. Okay. We've also covered the idea of running uh, adverse drug effects or adverse side effects, or whatever it says, uh, program to assist in removing side effects. Um, you know, well, let's see if it's finished loading here. I'm just kind of killing time. Okay, it's finished. So, you know, let's say you want to. Just focus on vitamins. You can just search vitamins here. It doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be. Uh, I'll just put vitamin instead of S. And it doesn't have to be a pharmaceutical, it can be a compound or a substance. Alright, so I'm going to go down to the V's. And there, you, as you can see, you've got vitamin A. B6, C, E, K. That's just an example. And if you go, say, biotin, which is one of the, uh, let's see. You can, you know, search B vitamins um, independently. Like you can search for niacin, biotin, you know, um, it'll give you. I'm just giving you some examples here. Niacin. Okay. We'll just have to go down to the niacin section. As you can see, there's niacin. You know, you can keep going on riboflavin. Let's see here. Yeah, so there's riboflavin, you know, so you get the idea. All right, folks, that's it for today. I hope this has been helpful to you, and uh, thanks for watching.